Okay, let's hope that uh, something hasn't broken since the last time I did this. It shouldn't have. But I don't know how you do test streams. Is there a way that you can test that they can still hear me? Because that didn't work last time. I knew I didn't work last time. And we're live. Someone just needs to... I can deafen. And I can... That didn't work last time. And did you yeah, fix... Yeah, okay, yeah, no, people can hear. Did you fix it so that, so that they can actually talk in the chat? Uh... No. Um, the link didn't... Oh, oh wait, no, does the link work? Right, stream settings. Okay, so apparently Tangent Tuesday's title doesn't quite work right, because I, I renamed the entire stream to episode 3. Um, how do I change that? <laughs> you, do you want, me, wait, you want me to rename it? Rename it to episode 4. Yeah, so we'll... You you fix that. It's been uh, it's been yeah. renamed. We don't have no we have uh <laughs> So welcome everybody to Tangent Tuesday. The intro was technical difficulties. Um I don't have my drinking water, so I'm gonna grab some while Ethan talks about whatever his intro topic was, which I know was mine. So what's your um your random potato fact for the day? We're back in a second. Uh, okay, random potato fact. In uh, Incan and Native American culture, uh, they are, they use the time it took to boil a potato as a unit of measurement. Uh, I, 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 I uh, need to find other potato facts. A sweet potato is not an actual potato. It's from a completely different type of plant. They are not potatoes at all. They just stole the name. Um... Potato is one of the most efficient uh, forms of growth based on the amount of land that you use. Uh, I'm running out of potato facts here. I didn't do enough uh, research on this. You're supposed to have one interesting fact. I gave three. Episode. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, let me go and stop myself from hearing the echo about 30 seconds behind. It's only 15. Um, well, that. Um, it's very important that you have talking water whenever you're planning to talk for a while. This will run out within about 10 minutes, I'm sure. Okay, so since you made me, since you put me on the spot to do yep. potato facts, we can discuss the uh, 85 gigabyte file that you found. 81 gigabit? Yes. Okay, so some people here will know that the, mine, uh, that the Game Academy Minecraft servers went down on Friday. And we're offline for a couple hours during the day. There's a reason for this. And when I, when I actually learned what that reason was, I was giggling for like an hour. It was really, really hard to actually focus on fixing it. Um, so, what happened was, we have been working on a new server uh, called Brave New World, which is going to be a new survival server. As part of that, there is a plugin on there that's supposed to generate some really pretty worlds to explore and we'll get to that when uh, uh, when you actually get to see them on friday well what this plugin did was there was a bug and it had an error and we turned it on thursday night and didn't think much of it and he just started throwing this error and then we went to bed in the morning we come back and the server has run out of space. Like the the entire hard drive is full, um, and that crashed the server on Friday. So I spent a couple of hours fixing that, and then uh, it, this was really the the next day when I actually found out what caused it. Um, what we found was that plugin, which had been crashing all night, had generated so many errors. The, the log file of those errors was 81 gigabits in size. How many now to, lines of text now was it generating to in a put second? That, to put that into perspective, the typical log file is measured in kilobits. So an 81 gigabit log file, I think I did the math on that, and it was something like 1 billion, or maybe even 1 trillion. I, I, I think it was 1 billion letters. It was something ridiculous. It was no way true. Effectively, if I tried to actually... Okay, so, so per is correct to me, it, it was 11 billion when I did the math. So, to put that in, into perspective, if I tried to actually read that log file, 
I don't think I have enough time left in my life to actually read the thing. <laughs> um, I have like so much data. We have like um, actually, let me Google something. How, how much data is the Library of Congress? Library of Congress. Um, is this possible to look up? Amount of text. Okay, so so the the Library of Congress amounts to about fifteen terabytes of data. So I'm not way more than than what I had. So is there a way to get a perspective of 81 gigabits of text in words? Um, I'll, I'll let you know this. I'll let you know this, Caleb. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, yes, Ty is it is being broadcasted. It's yeah. uh, someone so, get the link. Um, I've, I've got the ratio here, actually. It's approximately every one gigabit of data is about 600, 670,000 pages of text. Yeah, um, for context, if you wanted to download the entirety of English Wikipedia, it would be 45 gigabytes. Really? Yeah. So I made so many errors that I had two copies of, of Wikipedia worth of errors. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, Wikipedia is actually quite small space-wise. You can download a... Because it's just plain text. You can download a lot. When when we release Brave New World at the, at the end of this week, I want you all to, to remember that the Iris world, the, the, the really pretty world on there, is advertised as being extremely fast. Hold and it up. is so fast that it can generate two pages of Wikipedia in one night. That's how fast it is. So, yeah, that was that was Friday for me. Um, I had to. So yeah, if 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 I was slow responding to any of your emails or getting things fixed that I was supposed to be getting fixed, that's why. <laughs> so yeah, no, um, and that's that was my my experience with that. Um, as far as a tangent on that, we can discuss log files for a second. Typically, what a log file does is that when the, when there's an error or a crash or someone joins, it writes it down as text so that I can actually find that out. Um, it's just plain text. It's there's nothing special about it, which is why it's so amazing that, that they got that big. Um, but so in theory, I can see everything that you did, everything that you did on the server, pretty much. Um, anything that you said, when you joined, where you joined, and all that. The hard bit isn't having the data. The hard bit is finding the data. Um, and so that's where, when you get to more advanced stuff like our logger programs and the swear blocker and all that, the the fancy bit about those, and I actually plan on making them fancier in the future, is um, it's not storing the data. It's being able to find the data again later. Because uh, I can store everything that you ever say on every server. But I need to be able to word search that. Otherwise, there's no point. <laughs> I just want to make 19... um, I want to make 1984 jokes about that, but <laughs> why? What's 1984? You know, in 1984, it's a it's a famous book about dystopian future with uh, government that knows everything. Yeah, well, the the government does know know everything. But the hard bit isn't having your data. The hard bit is being able to use your data. Um, because there's yeah. just searching so much data out like, there. Like searching data is actually incredibly difficult it most most like you said before it's not about getting the data it's about being able to use it yeah it's it it's about finding the stuff that's relevant um if you've heard of ai stuff so that's that that's artificial intelligence and all that most of what ai actually is it's not like general intelligence um I mean, th that is a bunch of research but when, when you look at ai it's not what you see in the movies it's typically data processing algorithms trying to make relationships and figure out what's going on. Um, yeah, so a, like, uh, so uh, yeah, no, you got go ahead. <laughs> okay. I was gonna say I, I am not an AI specialist. That was something that I didn't find actually that interesting when I was doing my my study. Uh, I was much more into um, data management and algorithms, but not the AI side of things. 
Um, so I don't know what the cutting edge is, but I do know that one of the AI approaches is what's called a neural network. And what that boils down to is a whole bunch of math that's basically, here's the data and here's the answer. And I'm going to look at different different combinations of that data and decide effect, effectively yes or no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spit out a value between usually 0 and 1. Um, so it's actually not 0 or 1, it's 0 0.11, 0 0.23, 0 0.38 sort of thing. Essentially, um, I think it boils down to a, this is my estimate of the percent chance of, of it being yes or no. And when you do that with different sets of data, and then you... And, and then you take those answers of, of, of yes or no's and pass them through a, a second layer of neurons is the term they use. Um, you get to the point where you can make a prediction based on what the data is as to what the result should be or would be. And the complicated math behind a neural network is whenever it gets it wrong, it figures out what it should have said. And then it uses math to figure out how how it could have been more closer to that answer from last time. And you then just keep doing that process a thousand, a million, a billion times until eventually you're right more often than you're wrong. Yeah, so, and if, so that's... For example, so, uh, go ahead. Uh, chess, AI chess programs, they've been around for ages uh, at this point. Um, the way, that, they, the way that, that those would function is you give the artificial intelligence a set of conditions that it's trying to achieve which would in the end just be winning the game and then what you just do is you just have two bots go against each other and then whichever one wins is the bot that survives and goes against another bot and you just keep doing that that's, for... that's not neural network that's not that, neural network there, that's no, that's, network. yeah that 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 kind of training is i think adversarial evolutionary training yeah um that, but i'm not I'm... That I'm, is I'm the, even less in on that. On that, that is style. the basic function of how a lot of those bots have happened. It's that's how we've gotten AI that is able to beat uh, master chess players because they've just yeah, you, you, you just throw and play. They've played hundreds of like millions, to billions of chess games in a super short amount of time. But see, the key with like chess AI and stuff. Um, is chess is too complicated to process all the possible moves all the way down. Um, the the breaking point that solved chess for, from an AI perspective was using uh, certain heuristics, is the term, um, to essentially figure out about how good a move was without needing to run it all the way to victory. So... This is where, in chess, you now have the point system, where a pawn is worth one. Uh, um, Malcolm can will probably correct me, but a, a pawn's worth one, right? And then the queen's worth 12? I don't um, know. A queen's worth nine. nine. Okay. So, so, okay, so the queen is nine um, and such. But So each, each chess piece was assigned a point value for its approximate power, and I think the the heuristic also potentially took into account chess position, it so, does or, 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 chess or position. piece position, but yeah. maybe not. It, does. it um, does. So rather than this sequence of moves will lead me to victory, what the algorithm does is over the next six moves or seven moves, or it's it's basically down to how much process, process, processing power you have available. Um, which will give me the highest possible point score compared to my opponent. And it's trying to maximize that difference rather than my, uh, 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 rather than the king is in, is checkmated. Um, and if you've got that algorithm working, it's very easy to make it try to checkmate because you, you just make the king worth something like a hundred points. And so any, any, any set of moves that, that leads to the king being taken will immediately give you way more points than you could ever earn otherwise. So, so it's going to try and find king kills first. But otherwise, it's just just going to try and maximize the the point advantage that it can gain, so that it's easier to win later. And so, using things like that allows the program to to in a way think less, so that it can focus on just uh, 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 on getting to the goal piece by piece. Um, and it's it's tricks and shortcuts like that that have allowed 
AI research to go from we always win tic-tac-toe to now it's pretty much solved chess. I think it's pretty much solved Go as well, and Go was even harder. Um, and they've started making AI that, that does things like play StarCraft or play League of Legends. I, I, I have seen um, AI for both of those before. Uh, there also was an AI that played Jeopardy. Um, and the AI that plays Jeopardy is actually... It's a completely different problem from um, from chess. The the hard bit for playing Jeopardy for an AI is it needs to be able to pass an English question in the, in the Jeopardy format and roughly figure out what the question is. And then it basically just Googles the answer of itself using its own uh, 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 internal thing. The the actual finding the answer is a problem similar to what Google does. It's a, it's a lookup in terms of its own in, internal databases, but it actually uses some learning algorithms to try and figure out, all right, these are the top three possibilities based on some, some metrics. I'm going with this one, and that's how it guesses. Um, but the, the hard bit initially was just figuring out, take in some English text, and actually... Um, the bot that I'm thinking of was called Watson. It was not able to do speech to text. Um, the only reason why that bot was able to play Jeopardy was, was because the questions were specially given to it in text form rather than voice form. But yeah. given the question in text form, it had to figure out what was being asked first. Then it had to get the answer. And so a lot of the research and difficulty of that was was figuring out how to pass English sentences in a certain format to get the meaning out of them. What is it that you're looking for? Um, and that, and that's the kind of research that like directly led to things like the, uh, the Alexas and all that, that are able to take what you're saying and roughly convert it into a command to do something. Yeah. If, if you guys um, don't remember old speech recognition software was really rough. I mean, it's still not great. But... It's still not great, but you can use it now. and yeah. It doesn't feel like it's torture. I've, old speech recognition software would be um, it usually ha was optimized for Pacific accents so if you had a different accent than what it was designed for it just wouldn't work and even then you'd oftentimes have to repeat it two or three times to get it to actually do I what you want to, to remember that um, this was like probably close to five, six, seven years ago that, that we played with I think Skype had a speech to text algorithm and we played with it and it, and it just kept swearing on us <laughs> Do you re remember that, Ethan? Vaguely. But it, it, like, since it's... you were talking about searching for things, mm -hmm. um, when, it, when it comes to information, because we were talking about Wikipedia before, <laughs> it's very interesting to see uh, there's a... With the way that Wikipedia connects to everything, there is a... What was the ma minimum number of clicks? There, there's a theory going on. Yeah, that you I can get seven any clicks. article to almost any other article in under seven clicks on Wikipedia. Well, the the speed run wasn't it all all uh, all all routes lead to or, or all roads lead to Rome? Isn't is it isn't that like the speed run? Yeah, that, it, that, um... that, yeah. You, it's very easy. This is actually a very if you want to test some of your just random knowledge about things and just have some fun with it. If you go onto Wikipedia, select two articles that you can that you want to go between. So I don't know. Select. Um... Yeah, though you've you've got to be careful with that because the linkage can 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 be rude sometimes. So you've got to like choose your paths carefully. Yeah. Well, so like for example, let's say you're going from cotton candy and you want to get to Franz Ferdinand. Okay. The way that, so you can then test your knowledge of those things to try to get to that art to get that article. Yeah, you. You might go through something like cotton candy, country of origin, countries, Germany. No, it would be Austria. Okay, Austria then. Austria, wars, World War, World War, War One, Franz Ferdinand. Yeah, and so you could get there in about, in about six clicks, if you knew if you could, yeah. if you knew what you were looking for. It's a very good way of testing your mm -hmm. knowledge of random facts. You well, mostly think... history. But that, that's mainly yeah, it's, because it's that's what I history. always go. I always mm -hmm. go down the history pathway to find the stuff. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. I wouldn't advise doing it if you aren't careful because we, because Wiki, 
the the wiki articles there's a lot of good ones uh but they don't pick their pick their subject matter you will easily go off onto much less savory areas if you go down the wrong path yeah um, um, well, the, well the thing about wikipedia again mm-hmm. since we've, we've gone with this tangent people say like if you go to any college or anything like that they'll say don't use wikipedia as a source which is a fair and just criticism you can't use wikipedia as a as a properly researched source it is still quite accurate Mo- in most cases wikipedia is a pretty accurate source but it only gives you a generalized overview of sources yeah and from a from a college paper perspective it's also more likely to change yeah and so if anyone wants to verify your source and you've given a wiki article they then have to go and see what was the state of wiki at the time that you actually said that and wiki does actually support that there are ways that you can get the old articles but it's not convenient yeah in the slightest. Yeah. like when people say anyone can change a wikipedia article while it is technically true that they can change a wikipedia article that is not how it actually functions well, Anyone can change it, and then anyone else can change it back. And there is yeah, well, a there's a hierarchy of, of chain of yeah. there is there there is actually a hierarchy of elected Wikipedia moderators and officials who monitor this type of stuff. Most times, you can make it depending on the type of article and all that. You can change it, yes. But whenever you change it, you, uh, a link is left of what you did, and it usually gets sent in for review at some point. If especially if it gets questioned, uh, yeah. and if and if it's a very popular article like uh any of the history on the world wars or anything or anything like that those are much more heavily scrutinized in what material is allowed uh on how trusted of an individual you need to be to edit that article on wikipedia so no you can't log onto wikipedia right now and go change world war ii's article to say lol bad idea or something like that it just doesn't work yeah yeah, I. That sounds like a really difficult programming problem that I haven't researched. Yeah, so. lot, it's a it's a very difficult organization problem because um, mm-hmm. you've got to establish chains of command in a situation where everyone is a volunteer. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, that that just plays into the whole security is actually quite difficult to get right. Because the most dangerous, um, in, in any security situation, typically the most dangerous and weakest area is the people. Um, and so the, 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 the inside man tends to be one of the biggest threats to, especially any large organization. Because um, you, can, you can do all of these amazing things to, to protect stuff from the outside you've got your firewalls all of your all, all of your crazy cryptography that, 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 that doesn't stop it stop a person on the inside from getting a usb stick downloading the important files and walking out the front door yeah it goes back um, uh, it's like how the most effective hacking in the entire world right now is social engineering why are you going to try and hack someone's password when you can call up an employee and talk about how you lost your password for someone else's account? If you can convince them that they that you're right, then you don't even yeah. have to bother doing any hacks. They will give you the information for free. So that's why you always yeah. need to be very careful about um, social engineering. And, and that's your why Google. Connected. That's why things like Google and Facebook customer service aren't very serviceable. <laughs> Um, it'll be like, hey, I locked myself out of my account. Can you help me? No. The answer's going to be nope. <laughs> no, because uh, because you can't prove that you, that you own the account. They're going to make you jump through so many hoops because otherwise, that's that's exactly how big big account big accounts get hacked. Oh, I want to log in to PewDiePie's account. I'm going to pretend to be him and that I have forgotten my password. And some poor soul on the other end of the phone is going to believe me. Give me access, and then he's going to be be the reason why 80 million fans had their favorite channel deleted. Um, um, now, to be fair, a lot of these places have backups and everything, but you don't want to deal with backups. You can look in... Uh, the thing is, big security issues have occurred at one point. Uh, I believe Dropbox had, uh, for a period of time, like just due to some... I think it was just negligence. Um, they had it to where all password checks they it just had password equals true for three hours 
So if anyone looked, tried to, if anyone typed a username in and put in anything in the password box, it said you logged in and it let you do anything you wanted. It was around for three hours. I don't remember that one, um, but that sounds like an inside job again. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it was negligence or what, but it happened. Password equals true does not happen by accident, typically. Yeah, it, might, um, it probably wasn't an inside job, but it, it, it I'm, there's a, I'm probably simplifying it a bit, but it was, you could type in anything to the password box and you would be able to log into the account. Yep. Yeah, no, that, that that's a great way to mess things up. Um, and like I think we've just about exhausted security that we could talk about. Maybe yes. we should go back to geography? Mm. <laughs> I don't want to uh, do geog. Oh, I took a states test. And I yeah, we so did. badly on it. I don't want to talk about it. I Actually, know. I still I still have the scores for that because we all took it. Let me go find no, it. You don't need to. You, we don't need to show those. I'm going to delete the scores. I'm finding there. the scores. Hey, oh. no, 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 no! Don't you dare! Don't you dare! Your score was 36. 36. I, I don't. I know. I knew all the states' names. I just didn't know where they were. Yep. So this is a little timed exam that you can do where it gives you the name of a state and you've got to click on where it is as quickly as you can. If you get it wrong, you get to keep guessing until you get it right. Um, so, unfortunately, we, Bowie and myself, were born in England and then moved to the US. And we've been, and not only are we bad at geography, but we're really bad at figuring out where things are. Typically, I, I don't like so, maps. So, I tend to be a little bit better better than Ethan, and that's why Ethan got a thirty six percent. And I got, I think it was a 48. Yeah, 48 I, mean, I, I know Saf beat me. She got a 37. Yeah. But compared to some of the friends that we know, there's one guy that we know who's massive history buff. And unsurprisingly, he got 96. Um, but the rest of us, yeah, no. Mostly, mostly, fif- mostly 50s and 60s. What's embarrassing, what's embarrassing is that the guys who got... 90s, all live in Canada, <laughs> or at least uh, the 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 94 was a Canadian. Though it took him 10 minutes, I felt like he cheated. Uh, I uh, it took me 15 minutes to score 37. <laughs> okay. Or 36. Took me six, so I guess I was spam looking more. Uh, but so if we're uh, talking sorry, about sorry. states, it took me four. It took mum six. If we're talking about states, right? So you know, mm-hmm. okay, interesting thing. Delaware, right? Yeah. Oh, let me. I want to. I want to sh- see how big it is land area wise. I couldn't find Delaware on the map, so you. It's have to help tiny. Me. It's it's a tiny state. Oh, is that? Well, well, it, that's that's the New England state by by Massachusetts then. It's in, it's between it's by Maryland and New Jersey. Um. I barely know where that is. <laughs> it's uh, hold up. Um, here, I will, send, important, kids. I will send a picture into the chat, and then I will show it to people on the screen by covering up my face with it. Hey, actually, someone typed two messages in chat. Uh, I, I had the screen set up. Uh, I can't sh- show it on the screen. Only two. So no one say anything else. Okay. That was three. Right, right, that no, was I four. Think, no, that's good. That's good. I can, I can, <laughs> I, I, I can show it in chat. There you spot. go. There's, there, there's Delaware. Mm-hmm. The tiny little red speck. But for being such a small state, right? Did you know that like 50% of all businesses are, or like a massive portion of businesses are incorporated in Delaware? I guarantee you it's not 50%, but most of the big ones that are cross states. Uh, I think yeah, 50% of Fortune 500 companies are. Um, okay. Are, um, what's the word I just said? Incorporated into the, in Delaware. Yeah, so that's... that's... 250 companies. 250 of the, the biggest 500, companies. Yeah, but the Fortune 500, I'm pretty sure the 500 means top 500, basically. Yeah, but the, of the top 500 countries, about half of them are all um, incorporated in Delaware. And by mm-hmm. incorporation, we mean that you have stated that Delaware is the home, pl- it's the home place of your business. And the reason now, for that is they are very forgiving on tax laws and other business regulations. They have some of the best business there's some of the leanest business regulations now i'm sure it's not the case but it would be hilarious if one of the rules to be incorporated in delaware was that someone had to be living in delaware and so i could i could absolutely see one company hire someone 
someone in Delaware and your job is to live in Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, you I have, don't you think have that's to have your case. main offices there. You have to yeah. have you, you have to have one, your main office there. You can't just say you're in Delaware. You actually actually have to have your main offices there. Okay. I mean, are you that, Del? That I, I know you said you want to move to Delaware because it fits your name and everything. But are you a Fortune 500 company yourself? He might be. Because I don't. Because I don't Do- know. Well, uh, for, for, I don't know for, about like well the actual laws of the states. I just know it's really good for Fortune 500 companies. For, for all we know, Dell is is the product of a Fortune 500 company's AI program because I've never actually seen his face. <laughs> oh, I mean, if we're talking about weird business rules and everything, Monaco. Okay. Tiny, tiny nation off the edge of France. The it is the okay. it is the richest nation in the world, and by richest we mean it has the most number of millionaires per capita of any other place in the world. Monaco. Yes. Wait, I think it's Monaco. Are they the Mediterranean country, or or, or is it Africa? How is Monaco spelled? Maps. I, I figured it out. Uh. You, it are is you on the very to... south, uh, southeast end of France. Yeah, that's what I thought. So I just want to point out, right, I'm going to get the map again. Um, so here is a picture of Google Maps. Here is here, here is France. And I'm going to, when it loads, and I'm going to put it on chat. I really need to get a better way of showing this on screen. And then I'm going to zoom in all the way. This is where you need a transition in your yeah, I do. OBS to a secondary screen. And this is Monaco. This is zoomed in to almost a street view. Monaco is a, is a country? Yes, it is. It is a country, but it is tiny. And is the reason... The reason why it's one of the richest countries in the world, it or, or you could say richest countries in the world, is because it's one of the only countries in the world that has no income tax. If you go, if you if you are if you live there for more than six months a year, you don't have to pay income tax. Mm-hmm. So if you earn two million dollars a year, you don't have to pay any of it in income tax. Very tempting. It's very tempting, yes, but buying uh, a you have to live there. Buying a small apartment is ridiculously expensive well, because yeah, there because is so if, little space. If I earn a billion dollars a year, I'm gonna have to pay more than than what my my income tax would be over several years to buy a house there. Yeah, it is ridiculous. Which means it's, it's gonna be many, 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 many of the dollars for like a one room apartment. It's 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 like uh, it's very expensive, and also to be this to become a citizen, it is technically a monarchy. It's a, it, the country is a monarchy. You have to get to be, to get citizenship. You have to get in good graces with the current king. So if you uh, Monaco Properties dot dot MC. Oh dot, yeah, okay, yeah. Let's, let's, let's see the price uh, of the of the. I'm gonna of Monaco. search for sale sole agent. Uh, Park St. Roman, spacious new one bedroom on hill. Uh, is, is, is it? Yeah, so, 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 sorry. Spacious new one bedroom on high floor with with sea view and pool. 4.2 million euros. Yeah, so if you want a one, if you want a one bedroom apartment in Monaco, it's a, it's a couple it's million. A two, it's a two room apartment, a bedroom and a sitting room. Yep. So that's about, that's about 4 million bucks. Four, no, it's four point two million euros, which is, what, is slightly higher value than the dollar, I believe. Okay, so that, that makes it more than that. So four point two million euros to dollars. What is this in dollars? Okay, let's five see. five million dollars. Five million dollars. Okay. Yep. So if you if you would like to live in Monaco, in a two bed in a two room apartment, you it's a five million dollar price tag. It's it's a fancy apartment. It's got a beachside view. It's it's a nice apartment, but still, it's five million. 
Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see if there's one that's smaller. So this is this is only 1.3 million euros for sale. Five room duplex. So that's that's more reasonable. It's still um, a couple million. It's on the ground floor and you can't see anything. But it's still an apartment. If you want a house, it's crazy. It's, it's got hey hey. It's got five rooms and 133 square meters. It's not bad. With two, yeah, it has got two bathrooms, and I do wonder if if two of those five rooms are bathrooms. But yeah, well, it's not, we're not shopping for rooms in we're not shopping for apartments in Monaco. We are seeing how overpriced they are. Okay, because interesting thing about the taxes in Monaco are during I think it was World War Two, right? France decided to do something about Monaco because Monaco was a, has been a thorn in France's side for a while. Because what kept happening is all the rich people in France would leave France and go live in Monaco. So that way France got no income tax. So during the middle of World War II, or actually, no, I think it was during the Cold War. I World War II or the Cold War, I have to double check my facts after this. There, like, the entire world was, at, was super nervous and everything. All the stuff was going on. And France decided this was a good time to negotiate a tax agreement with Monaco because everyone else was busy. So Ooh. they basically just said, hey, you got to fix your taxes or, you know, we're going to have to do some stuff. That's something that I found something that we could actually afford, maybe, if we sold our house. Um, uh, 290,000 euros for a three-room apartment. That's actually, that's actually reasonable. Yeah, we still gotta actually get in there and become a citizen, which means you're gonna have to. Yeah. Usually, you're usually probably. I think you're gonna have to get. You have to get on the king's good side. Yeah, that, that, that one can actually be. Be afforded, but I don't know where it is or why it's so cheap. I don't know. Oh, because it's not actually in Monaco. If yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not in Monaco, it's, which defeats it's the a, purpose. It's it's a three-minute walk from Monaco. <laughs> That defeats the purpose, though, because then you're in <laughs> France, and that means you have to pay French taxes. Yeah, that 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 might be the reason why it's so cheap. Uh. Well, also, if I you're mean, yeah, it's it's still no, it's the if I don't you, know. the way the the France dealt with their tax problem because people kept taking their uh, living in Monaco, so they had to pay French taxes. Was if you are French and if you are French, or you earn more than 20% of your income in France, you Monaco will tax you uh, the, sa the same amount that France would. Okay. And they have to pay... So that's the only reason why France let lets them exist? Yes. Because why would France let them exist otherwise? They're taking all their money. Well, I'm trying to find location if this place really is in Monaco. They don't seem to want to tell you. Let's say, no, 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 here's, the, here's the location. Yeah. The I mean, if work. we're talking about other tiny countries, uh, Vatican City is technically a country. Um, I think you can walk around it in about two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, Monaco is really expensive. I... <laughs> I don't think I want to want to live in Monaco. I'd well, okay. The reason why Monaco well. has no income tax is because they make all their money from tourism and casinos. That's how the government pays them for their own stuff. Yeah, well, that too. And... Also, um, any business there, because they have so because they encourage so many people with a large amount of money to show up there, businesses there get. I mean, if you if you have to live there six months of the year and you make a couple million dollars, you're going to spend some of it. So you're going to get so some there's, money. There's probably a very rich, vibrant, uh, fancy restaurant business. Yeah, Mon there. Monaco is known for being very... Uh, what? Uh, like, a very wealthy place. What is the... Um, there's, another pl there's another name for... What's the, what's the other country that's known for that? Dubai, I think. It's, it's another country. It's a city. Dubai. Uh, I mean, there's, there's that one just outside of China that was... That was used for that, but I forget the name. Uh, a lot of us, yeah. I mean, I don't. Uh, do, do we even want to discuss the um the weird thing that is Hong Kong and, tai and Taiwan? I don't think we 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 know enough. <laughs> uh, 
And we always seem to find ourselves back in the Asian countries. Not necessarily. Monaco is European. Yes, but... We, yeah, okay. I was just going to talk uh, about weird... Uh, weird border stuff. I know this is kind of geography, but it doesn't involve maps, if, so I'm better. Okay, if, we're, if we're talking about borders, how borders develop can be very, very interesting. Uh, if you can go back to a, to a map of the US, some states have nice, squiggly, natural-looking borders, and other states have straight lines. And yeah, I mean, that's Canada. Uh, the difference the, between the Canada them, US yeah. border. Yeah, and the, the difference between them is, does the border follow some kind of natural barrier, like a mountain range, or a river, or somebody's backyard, um, or did someone just say, this is mine, and that is yours, don't don't cross this line. Yeah, it's like what? Uh, yeah, it's like what's the Mediterranean line for uh, the Canadian for the mo- most of the Canadian uh, American border? I can't remember. Uh, what well, I don't remember what the number of line is. Um, no idea. No idea at all. But there is a straight line. I actually don't remember how that border was established. I know we have like Louisiana Purchase, which is pretty much everything left west. I'm not going to call it left. That's that's dumb. West. West of the Mississippi. Oh yeah, because see when. It- when I'm looking south, left is to the east. Yes, I know that. But I, I don't don't call directions on map left, right, up, and down. Just north, south, east, and west. You know, I actually heard that there's a language that, that, that doesn't have left and right. Yes, I've heard of that language. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think it's an African language. Mm. They 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 just say north, south, east, west. There's no there is no such word for left and right. Which means that the people who speak this language natively always know which direction north is because they can't speak without knowing that. Yeah. It's one of those weird skills that you would pick up after living with it for a while, but for most people, it's not something oh, they think about. Would you? That, that seems to me like one of the skills that you would really have to be native to, to, to be able to do. You could, I think you could pick it up. You all, all it really is, is you get one point of direction that you know which direction it is. So, like, the, su- the sun rises in the east. So you just look, e- you just know where east is. And you just have a mental track on which ways you've turned. Yeah, so in other words, no matter what, every time you turn around, you have this compass in your head. Yeah. It faces you towards it. And you probably have to reorient yourself every now and then to make sure you're not leaning too or far off. Or ask someone else, but yeah. Yeah, but, but I mean, there, there are many times you can check. I mean, if you know what time it is, you can kind of see which direction is east and west based on the sun's position. Um, any la- natural landmarks around you that you've lived in, you can look at them and go, oh yeah, that's north-ish. So I know which way is north. Yeah. So that, that raises the question is, is it easy to figure out which way is north based on where you are in the world? I mean, if you want to look for the hardest place to figure out where North is, go to the Midwest of the United States. The middle of Kansas is good. It would be a good example. It's just mo. It's all open field. Yeah, but I'm I'm, I'm talking about sun sun, uh, sun position. Because if you are below the Tropic of Capricorn, I don't remember which one was north, which one was south again. Wouldn't the sun always be north of you? Technically. I don't know. Uh, the the Tropic of Capricorn is the, the southern one. Cancer is northern. But I, I feel like it would be. I uh, I don't know enough about this that, about that particular topic to give an answer to it. Yeah, I think I think we have completely divulged in stuff that we that we don't know anything about. Um, does Does anybody in chat have anything that they actually want to ask? Because I'm I'm out of stuff on this topic. Ah. Uh... No, I don't want to talk about unicorns. The, the Tropic of Unicorn. Dragon? I mean, if you're talking about dragons, it's interesting to see how different cultures have, associ- have different associations of dragons. There's the Western dragon. Yeah. There's there's a Western dragon, and you have the, the much more... So that's your typical... Um, like, if you think of, like, a typical dragon with its big wings and um, jaws that breathe fire, that's a much more traditional Western dragon uh, compared to an Eastern dragon, which are much more like snakes. They're, they're very much they're very much surface. Do, do eastern dragons tend to be really fat too? They are generally bulky, yes. Uh, if you look at most like, designs, because because when I've seen dragons in anime and whatnot, uh, there's there's one in in 
particular that comes to mind. All the dragons are really kind of fat. Right. Uh, it, it depends if they if they're inspired by Western dragons or Eastern dragons. And I'm talking about myth- original mythology here because modern day with so much interconnection between uh, certain Eastern countries and Western countries, um, a lot of those will use the other types of dra- each other's dragons in things. Like, well, 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 I say fat, you've got you've got longer tail, big wing dragons, and then you've got shorter tail everything's in the main body more rounded big yeah. fat dragon <laughs> well no the way i would describe it is a western dragon i this is just coming from someone who does a lot of art stuff a western dragon excuse me has a proper rib, has a proper rib cage in its chest area if it's like yeah like, and while and... an eastern dragon is much more snake like yeah, well, if you think of the Chinese dragon, is the is the well, big one that I think yeah yeah well, the, yeah the, chi- like... the Chinese and yeah I don't but I, I still don't know how Japanese and Chinese dragons differ because they are different. I don't know about I have not gone into the mythology of the yeah. mythology in general is weird like Greek and Roman mythology is it's super weird especially because Roman mythology kind of just took all of the Greek stuff it's like yeah no we're just gonna add that on top of our mythology at the same time. Mm. If you look at a lot of modern literature, a lot of it has, um, like you can find a lot of it's inspired by different Greek and um, Roman uh, mythology. Uh, yeah, so as Poe was saying, Japanese dragons are similar to the Chinese in that they are most often depicted as a massive serpent-like creature with no wings. The best way to distinguish between the two is to look at their toes. So Chinese have five, whereas dra- Japanese have three. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so that means that the, the, the dragon and the anime I'm thinking of are it's by by Western. Uh, if, it, um, if yeah, if it's a, if it's not because they are they Western. are air they are they are air based dragons. They're just fat, which I guess I, makes them even more even more of an American dragon. That's not how um, that works. <laughs> just because just because Baby Yoda has three toes does not mean something else with three toes is the same thing. Yeah. You, now you we're just, that, if that we're just gonna use that logic and say okay if that's the case if an animal I'm, has I'm, paws I'm not the same spoil thing. it I'm not gonna spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it but baby Yoda does have a name I haven't seen it so I wouldn't know it's just that no one seems to care because everyone's like it's, it's baby Yoda <laughs> no um but like no, if, if try. We, it's not adorable it's just a disappointment if we're going by that logic of um of oh because this is because this had because a dragon has three toes or a Japanese dragon has three toes oh is the Chinese a dra- Japanese hop I have to go for scroll up and check Japanese is three okay I was right just because a Japanese dragon has three toes and Baby Yoda has three toes not making the same because that's the case we are going to say that cats and dogs are the same thing which is not true yeah I mean if you if you plot a hierarchy of um, not really worship but respect and such, the dog worships the human that worships the cat, as far as the cat's concerned. Okay, that's that's kind of harsh. Well, you've you yeah, you've I seen know. those, right? I, like, I, I, like I, a, I've seen those. Yeah. The 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 dog see, sees the human and thinks that the 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 human gives them food, therefore the human must be God. Whereas the cat sees the human, and the human gives the cat food, therefore the cat must be God, because the human is serving me. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I, yeah, I mean, cats yeah. aren't that uptight. <laughs> yeah, but they own you. I, I take offence so, to this, although I was woken up this morning by a cat biting my face. So. Yeah, because you, cause you weren't doing what she wanted. The door got closed in the night. The yep. Cat, the cat wanted out. She, she wanted to leave, and you have to open the door for her because she can't do it herself. That 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 makes you her servant. So, yeah, that's that's cats for you. Did we have elephants have a neural reaction in their brains when they see a human that is the same when humans see a little... Person? I have seen no, that I didn't before. Know that. I have seen that before, Per. Actually, yeah. if, we're to- if we're talking about that in general, um, human brains kind of hardwired to find round circular objects cute just in general because like let's be honest babies have 
babies are kind of fat and chubby, but they all but they're all round looking, so they look cute to us. Why are we like potatoes? We're not. No, we're not doing. We're not calling potatoes cute. I like they're they're delicious, but they're not cute. Yeah. Fair. No wait. Yeah. Okay, it's fair. <laughs> Um, you can, can you make a potato cute? You can make anything you can, cute if you, you try can, hard enough. You can carve a, a pumpkin. Can you carve a potato? Yes. Have you seen, people have made musical instruments out of potatoes before. Have you, I don't know if you guys Usually have seen Usually ocarinas, right? Huh? Usually ocarinas, right? Uh, wind instruments, yeah. generally, yeah. Yeah. I've seen them with ocarinas, I've seen some other ones. But yeah, it's... I mean, that, that's it's not really an ocarina at this point. It's just a wind instrument. And because a potato okay, is I'm, a round object... I'm going to say so something in my massive ignorance of wind instruments. And I would love if anyone in the chat can correct me if, if they know better. But I believe that there's a difference in... That that, that there are two types of wind, wind instruments. Yes, you, ha you have your are... wind and brass. Okay. That's... So those are the terms. But in terms of the way they make sound, I think one is a whistle based on air flowing over and creates a whistle sound. And the other one is re of of a... Yeah, it's it's a rever reverberation of the person making the music going... Yes. Besides that, besides that, that noise didn't come through clearly at all. But that is your brass instruments. So your trombone, your tuba, um, all those type of things. Your wind whistle, they're wind, they're wind something. I, 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 I've heard them called different names. I ended up doing a music, I did a music class a while ago, which talked about this. But they are your, I think people just end up calling them, shortening them down to wind instruments, even though brass oh. are technically wind instruments, but they are completely different at the same time. Woodwinds, there you go. That's that, that that's the yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, that's the last one. I'm looking for. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's it's interesting. But at the same time, the guy playing the trombone is just blowing, blowing raspberries into the end of that thing. Which must get really, really hard to do after, after like, more than 30 seconds. It takes a lot of breathing practice to be able to play. Uh, I know it takes a lot to play both uh, woodwind and brass, but I think brass generally, especially if you play a bigger brass instrument, requires more lung capacity. Um, yeah. So I did it for about two seconds, and my lips still feel weird. Actually, it wasn't even that long. <laughs> no, brass, b r a s s, not grass. <laughs> yeah, uh, any brass is any of the metal-based wind instruments. Okay. Now... Oh, actually, I don't know. I don't know how flute goes. I think flute, technically, even though if you can get wooden flutes, I think they still mm -hmm. count as woodwind hmm. instruments. I might be mistaken on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Originally, they were all wood. They were all wood. So, you can make them out of... Um, right, of. right, yeah. Yeah, and and you kind of get a whole bunch of different different realms that you can do with both wind, and then you get off into string, and... Is, is an organ still a wind instrument, technically? Yeah, there's some weird like, ones. Like, like a like... church organ? Yeah, some weird ones, because, like, if you think about it, a piano is just a string instrument. It's just... A piano is just a guitar, kind of. You just you just have a big box that, when you push a button, it hits a, it hits a string to make a, a sound. Yeah, but... Well, it's probably easier, easier to compare a piano to a harp in the yeah. way that their strings are laid out. But a harp, you pluck them, and a hammer, you, you hit them with tiny hammers. So, a piano, you hit them with tiny hammers. Yeah. Um. And that's what the and that's what the keys are doing, uh, uh, in the back end of there. Um. I mean, most of music again is reverberations. Like, um, something that's interesting. So you know how most instruments are hollow, and that's so it lets the music lets the sound reverberate. Um. That is actually how the human voice works when singing as well. Um, a lot of, especially if you do deeper levels of singing, not high, not so much high pitched, yeah. most of that sound comes from the reverberation in your chest cavity. It's why um, when, when it comes to singing, uh, you have to be, uh, it's told to a lot to beginner singers, uh, to be careful not to tense your shoulders up because it messes with the reverberation of the sound around your chest. Interesting. Interesting. I can't sing, so I don't I, I, uh, no I also idea. can't sing very well, but I know about that. 
Yeah. So, to be fair, I've never tried to sing, but uh, I wanted to learn to un- to hear tones better. Mm-hmm. Because when people say they're tone deaf, it is incre- it is actually very rare. It's such a small number of people who are actually tone deaf. Um, Sometimes but there are people who are, don't. Yeah. You have to train your ear to be able to hear tone. And also, well, in a way, to be able to, uh, is it even possible to be truly tone deaf? Yes, it is. Okay. It is very. It's a very minute amount of people. Yeah, because. When you say that you're tone deaf and you aren't one of the very rare, if you're tone deaf, you probably shouldn't be able to understand many languages too, because there's a lot of tone involved in language. Um. Uh. So. The the examples are more are, are more obvious to me in Japanese than English because I know English natively, so I don't. I don't think about it, but in Japanese, there's kawaii and kawaii. And I can't pronounce the difference between them yet because it's ka and ko is 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 the difference. Um, see, so so, so a, a ka a ka versus a ko, and like there are so many English words that are also that like that, but I can't think of them off the top of uh, my head because I, I, I know the words. Th noise is big, um, mm-hmm. like the th type of but noise. Oh, in different. terms of two words that are extremely similar extremely similar but there's just one vowel that's slightly different and it's usually a's and o's or e's and i's like I mean, we, you can we barely go back tell to the, the, read, read, the, the read 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 and all that no, but see that's that's not an example of it read read is a spelling issue but not so much a pronunciation issue you can fairly easily tell read versus read yeah um what you can't tell, I haven't got a good example. I I, I can't think of anything um, like that in English at the top of my head. Well, okay. Uh, effect versus effect. I hate, oh, I miss I. That's see. like a lot of people. People have, have issues with that, but also if you're not native English, you might know the difference between the difference between the two words. But can you pick them out of speech? Because effect, effect. Effect. I I have to make a point to pronounce it as effect or effect to actually make it so that, so that you can tell me apart in natural speech. But if I'm not thinking about it, I might just say them about the same way. It took me like a year um, and a half to use those two words properly. Yeah, because I could and, keep messing it up every time. It took me a while and to for, understand it. For people who are still confused by it, so effect with an e, so effect effect see even i say it with an with an uh sound so it's even harder to 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 get across but yeah, so like i will effect, i usually go effect and effect yeah but so to to be pedantic effect is the result of an action so something happened and the effects of that occurred the water affected the qua- the no the... no you just got it wrong again did i Effect, yeah. I, th- I, th- I threw a rock, and there was an effect as a result. I think. Um, effect would be uh, would be causing a, a causing an effect on something. So effect is basically a result. Effect is a verb. <laughs> I am going to affect the window by throwing a rock at it, and the so so i i will affect the window by throwing a rock at it and the if and the effect of that effect is is that the window breaks yeah yeah so the 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 effect is the window is broken but the effect is that i was breaking the window i i uh, I affected the window with an A to cause the effect of the window going smash. Okay, I, I that, those words still confuse me. I just avoid using them. Um, <laughs> yeah, but so that's that's the difference, and it matters substantially more in your written language than it does in your verbal. Yeah, um, if you, they sound so similar, if you just say effect and 
you, you don't know which one it is. Yeah, it sounds you... so similar, the person could fill in the rest of it. If you say it quickly enough, someone who cares will just fill in the right answer for them. Yes. For it. Someone who, who doesn't care wouldn't know it's in the first place. Um, but that's the other thing about language as well, is that you tend to use the more obscure um, but precise words in written speak, but not in spoken speak. Um, and that's there's kind of a beauty to that, but it also means that like it's it's good to yes, spoken speak per I said spoken speak. There's that's that is valid English. There's nothing wrong with that. It just sounds weird to your ear for some reason. Um so what's the way I put it? One of the things that I've learned from learning Jap from doing Japanese and just in general is that the way to build your vocabulary is reading. Um, you'll get exposed to a lot of, a lot, to a lot more precise words, and then once you've read it a few times, that's when you can start to use it in natural speak. Um, so, in English, let's say when we're talking about walking somewhere, there's a lot of meaning behind which word you use. But you don't tend to use things other than I walked when you're speaking. In written speech, if you want to have a much more powerful statement, you might say that you trudged somewhere, you skipped somewhere, you skated somewhere. You paced. Like, paced, strode, yeah. Uh, that, that, that is a good one there. Per. Traverse is um, a good one. That's a good word. Yeah. But all, all these different words mean the same thing, but don't. And picking up on the difference between them is something that you kind of you just need exposure to honestly one, one of the best examples is just reading fiction novels and stuff like that and you'll get more of this um meaning in these words and, and stuff like that and so if you come across a word that you don't know just look it up and add it to your to your um repertoire yeah, that's the word. Um, but like, it's it's kind of the case of, well, yes, vocab also works, Ty. But Ethan's fancy French word of repertoire. I like saying it. Is, it's a fun word. Is a same meaning and it works. Um, but so like, building up a vocabulary, it's not hard. It's just that you need to make a point of always listening out for more interesting words out there. Yeah, no, um, but you don't have to go out of your way to go learn words that you would never actually use. Yeah, but just like, when, when you hear an interesting word, just go, oh, what does that mean? And then see if you can use it. Defenestration is yes. a great word. I take offense to that. Yeah, no, but if you ever have an opportunity to use the word, to to use the word defenestration in a sentence. Life has come. It, You've made a good life choices. Sense. Yeah, and it makes sense. Everything was worth it for learning that word. It was it was absolutely it was absolutely worth it. Um, so learn the word and see and see if, if you can use it. I mean it's I mean like the one thing don't go to learn don't go to learn hippomonstrosis crocodiliophobia. It's not worth it. Right, but but supercilious might have a use tie. It might have a use. Um, and most of the time it's just to make. It's just to make you sound ass, to to make you sound smarter or, or arrogant. But that, but but there are purposes to that. I sometimes. mean, one of my favorite words, Kev, you should have used, for smarter or arrogant is a way better word, which is one I think you didn't use. Hubris. hubris. Hubris is a great word. But hubris wouldn't fit the grammar that I used there. Hubris is a noun, not I, a I way know, you sound. But it still has the same concept. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, okay, so yeah, yeah, you've got hubris, um, uh, vehemently is a good word as well. Vehemently is an interesting word. Uh, I, I don't know, using that's kind of weird. There, there was an example that I saw recently that was like, I vowed to get vengeance vehemently. Um, and those are all unusual english words you don't use them very often 
But that's a very powerful sentence because of that rareness. And so you can you can use phrases like that, just like get that that, 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 little, that little bit of extra punch. Um, well, so yeah, it's 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 down to to the words you use, and so it's it it's interesting to try and pick out words and learn them, and then just see see if you get a chance to use them or not. I find I usually find it easier to learn the words and use them in speech because I never remember the spelling of the new words that I learn. We're not going to have time until one minute from now, Ty. <laughs> Because we, we always start five minutes late. This time we actually didn't start that much late. Technically, yeah, so... technically we've been live for uh, an hour and five minutes. Yeah, but that was because I had to get my water. So, yeah. Which is which is all gone, by the way. I, ha- I, I, I have no water. I also have none. I drank my drink already. So, if you want to confuse someone, don't say water. Just say dihydrogen monoxide. Yeah, dihydrogen monoxide. Go make a go make an article about how one hundred percent of people who take dihydrogen monoxide die at some point in their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a very deadly. Like it's yeah. it's got it's got an absolute one to one death. There was death an death actual death. paper done on that where mm-hmm. they surveyed a bunch of people, asking them if they should ban the use of di- of dihydrogen monoxide uh, due to its health risks, and a lot of people said yes. Mm-hmm. It, yep. it, the, the whole point of the study was to show that you can, you can make thing you can make people do things by just sounding smart, even if they don't understand no. what you're saying. In other words, if you if you use big complicated speech and people don't know don't know what you're talking about, they will agree with you just so they haven't got to admit that they have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, and that's a good yep. place to end it off for now. Yep, because that is kind of the whole point of Tenant Tuesday. I don't know what I'm talking about, but it sounds it sounds right. Uh, so remember, yeah. always fact check everything we say and everything you say because it might be wrong. Uh, <laughs> there's probably some parts of it that are quite wrong. I mean, when we're talking about music and singing, I'm just talking about stuff I did in the class two and a half years ago. I've sung it once before, but hey, singing is interesting. I I do know that it's accurate. But I have no idea anything else. I'm that. really glad your mic doesn't pick that up properly. It <laughs> makes it way funnier. You just, you just, you yeah. just, you just make a noise and it just goes, and it just goes blank. And and, then... and on the perfectness of of microphone technology, we will end the the episode today. <laughs> we come back next week at three p.m. for the next Tangent Tuesday. And I will try to have the the other microphone, and we'll see if it can actually pick up on raspberries. Probably not. Uh, it probably, yeah, that, that, you guys don't want to hear that. <laughs> wow. Alrighty. We don't have very good closers.